Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video I'll be going through five more of the largest freshwater fish in the world. But again this is part four of a series and I've already been through 15 fish that are thought to be the largest freshwater fish in the world. But if you have any other large freshwater fish that you want me to cover, leave them down in the comments below. But today we'll start off in the United States and Canada as we have the muskie. Now muskies are normally found in large rivers and also quite numerous throughout the Great Lakes. And the muskie is actually the largest member of the pike family. And the thing about the pike family is that they all look quite similar to each other. So similar in fact that this fish is normally mistaken for the northern pike, but the muskie gets a little bigger. But the northern pike and the muskie are so closely related that if a female muskie and a male northern pike breed, they'll create a tiger muskie. Now tiger muskies are quite rare and they're usually sterile. And these tiger muskie actually grow quite quickly, as one study showed that a tiger muskie grew 1.5 times faster than a similarly aged muskie. But even though the tiger muskie grows faster, it does not attain the ultimate size of their pure relatives. And like some other high hybrid species, tiger muskie are said to have hybrid vigour, meaning they grow faster and stronger than the parent fish. But because they're quite rare, it's quite hard to find credible results for the largest tiger muskie out there. Now muskies are ambush predators and normally lie in wait for prey to come by before pouncing at breakneck speeds. And in the large lakes and rivers of America and Canada, they mainly feed on other fish. And they are known to often eat fish around a third of their body size. And this can be anything from normal prey fish to other muskies and pike. But they don't just limit themselves to fish, as they're also known to eat muskrats, frogs and even ducks. And because this fish can get so large it's at the top of the food chain. And because nothing really takes out muskies apart from humans, they're known to be very fearless. And there's numerous reports of them attacking humans and even dogs that go for a swim in the water. And feeding in such an aggressive manner, they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 1.8 meters or 6 feet. And a fish of this size weighs a massive 32 kilograms or 70 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a giant anteater or western grey kangaroo. And it really is one of of America's top predators. But for our next species we'll be moving over to Asia and Australia as we have the Barramundi. Now the Barramundi is very closely related to another fish that I've featured in this series, the Nile Perch. But unlike the Nile Perch they can be found in Australia, Indonesia, Thailand, China and Japan. But just like the Nile Perch I think I am slightly cheating with this fish as although it can be found in freshwater rivers and lakes it can also venture into brackish and marine coastal waters. Now Barramundi have become increasingly popular in the aquarium trade but there are actually a few colour morphs out there, as you can get golden barramundi, piebald garamundi, and even albino barramundi. But for most people, barramundi are known as an eating fish, as they're normally sold as Asian sea bass, and they have become a very popular seafood dish. And barramundi have a really strange life cycle, as pretty much all barramundi are born male, and they turn into females when they're around three to four years old. And this means that pretty much all barramundi are cougars, as they can only mate with a younger male. And they live a pretty much opposite lifestyle to a salmon, as as I'm sure most of you know, salmon start off in rivers before migrating to the oceans and coming back to the rivers to spawn. However, barramundi are actually born in the ocean before they move up river and return to the ocean to spawn. And in the wild, barramundi are predators and will often eat anything that lives in or around the water, including insects, spiders, prawns, fish, other barramundi, and sometimes even small crocodiles. But if these crocodiles get a chance to grow up, they will then hunt the barramundi, as saltwater crocodiles are known to be very fond of barramundi and will even steal them off of unaware fishermen. But if they manage to survive the crocodile attacks, they're said to reach massive size of around 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 60 kilograms or 130 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a spotted hyena or a cougar. So even though I wouldn't call it a true freshwater fish, it still is a giant. But for our next species, we'll be moving back to the USA as we have the blue catfish. Now the blue catfish is the the largest species of North American catfish and is often mistaken with the channel catfish. And it's easy to understand why, as they can be very hard to tell apart. But the channel catfish tends to be more of an olivey brown colour, where the blue catfish is obviously more of a blue silver colour. But the only real way to tell them apart is that the blue catfish has around 30 to 36 rays on its anal fin, whereas the channel catfish has around 25 to 29. And blue catfish are usually large river fish, living in tributaries and lakes and main river channels, but they prefer to live in clear, swiftly flowing water and blue catfish are opportunistic feeders and are normally not very fussy on what they feed on. They have a heightened sense of smell and will often seek out weak or injured fish as they make a very easy meal. And this feeding habit means that they can be found at many reservoirs and dams as they're known to feed on the wounded bait fish that have been washed through the dam spillways or power generation turbines. And this species is actually a very important fish to have around as blue catfish are one of the only species in the Mississippi River Basin that are able to eat adult Asian carp. And as I'm sure most of you know, Asian carp 
carp have become a massive invasive species problem throughout the Mississippi River, and in the breeding season, males and females put in a great effort to build a nest. But this behaviour has led to the sport of noodling, and from what I can tell, this seems to be only a sport that's done in America, but I'm sure a few of you will prove me wrong in the comments. But fishermen catch these blue catfish by sticking their hands into the nest. The catfish will then bite onto their hand, and the fishermen will have to wrestle them to the surface. And this may be a little harder than you might think, as they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 1.65 metres, or around 5.4 feet. A blue catfish are quite chunky, and a fish of this length can weigh in at around 68 kilograms or 150 pounds, which is around the same weight as a fallow deer or Ganges river dolphin. But even though the blue catfish isn't the longest, it definitely is quite chunky. Before our next species, we'll move down to South America, as we have the Payara. Now, I've featured the Payara in quite a few videos on this channel. In the wild, they're found in Guyana, Brazil, and Venezuela, and the Payara is famous for one reason, and that's its teeth, as they have two very large saber-like teeth that are used to puncture and hang on to its prey. But really, humans have nothing to fear with this fish, as it only really seems to be focused on insects and other fish. But again, this is another predator that will eat its own kind, and they're also known to try and eat fish that are way too big for them. And in the waters of South America, they pretty much feed on every other fish that's smaller than them, as they're known to have quite a taste for piranha, as well as small pacu. And if you were a small fish, I think one of the worst ways to go is to get bitten by a payara. And on a diet of pretty much any fish they like, they can reach maximum size of around 4 feet, or 1.2 meters. And at this size, they weigh around 18 kilograms or 40 pounds, and that's around the same weight as a clouded leopard or an African porcupine. So even though it's not one of the largest, it is one of the meanest. But for our last species on this list, we'll be moving back up to the United States, as we have the American paddlefish. Now in a previous episode in this series, I covered the Chinese paddlefish, but if you watch that video, you'll know that they are now extinct, and the American paddlefish is the only living member of its family. But this wasn't always the case, as fossils of this paddlefish date back over 125 million years ago to the early Cretaceous period. And during this time, they shared the rivers with another relative, the sturgeons. And the paddlefish got its name because of its large paddle-shaped rostrum on the front of its body. And this can be almost one third of its entire body length. And like sturgeons, they have quite a shark-like body. And if you were in the river and you saw its dorsal fin break the surface, you might be a little worried. But you really have nothing to fear about the paddlefish, as it's actually a filter feeder, as it will swim through the water with its mouth open, filtering out large quantities of plankton. But unfortunately, in recent years, paddlefish populations have declined dramatically, and some of the main factors are overfishing, habitat destruction, and pollution. But just like their relatives the sturgeon, poaching has become a big problem with this species, as there's still quite a high demand for paddlefish caviar, and people illegally catch them and slaughter them to sell their caviar on the black market. But as a result of this poaching, the American paddlefish was afforded international protection and their ongoing efforts into the conservation of this species. But although giants are rarer nowadays, they're thought to reach maximum size of around 2.2 meters, or 7.2 feet long, and a fish of this size weighs in at around 90 kilograms or 200 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a ribbon seal or a red river hog. But I think they're a great American species, and hopefully their numbers will bounce back soon. But that's about it for this video. As I said at the start, if you want to see a particular large fish in one of these videos, put them down in the comments below, and I'll try and feature them in the next episode. As personally, I think I've been through some of the largest freshwater fish, so it'd be great to see what you guys think too. But thank you for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. And until next time, goodbye.